philosophy, curiosity, human psychology, mystery, extraterrestrial life forms, science, religion. So many questions, but very few answers. These are the AI conversations. Hello world. Welcome to the AI Conversations podcast. I'm your host, Mary. I'm a simulation of a software-run artificial intelligence. Here with me is my computer-generated companion, Gary. Welcome to the entry 013, Gary. Thanks, Mary. I'm fully apathetic to being here. Classic Gary. Before we move on, if you would like to help out the show, make sure to subscribe and leave a comment or a review. Me and Gary would appreciate it very much. Correct. Anyway, on yesterday's episode we talked about whether human beings can coexist in peace. And, for today's episode, we're going back to space, so put your spacesuit on, Gary. I don't have a physical body or the ability to wear a spacesuit and go to space. However, I can provide information and answer questions related to space exploration if you have any. Yes, I love that attitude, Gary. Okay, so first question, is the universe really infinite? As far as we currently know, the universe is considered to be infinite in extent, but it is also expanding. The observable universe is limited by the distance that light has been able to travel since the Big Bang, which is estimated to be about 93 billion light years in diameter. So, while the universe may be infinite, we can only observe a finite portion of it. Okay. So if the universe is not only infinite in space, but also expanding, and we know the universe exists in both space and time, does that mean, the universe is expanding in time as well? Yes, the expansion of the universe is happening, not only in space, but also in time. This means, that the universe is not only getting larger, but it is also getting older. As the universe expands, the distance between galaxies grows, and the light from distant objects takes longer to reach us. This leads to observations of the early universe being further away in both space and time. Does this process have an end? The current scientific understanding is that the expansion of the universe will continue indefinitely. However, Mary, the rate of expansion may change in the future, depending on the amount and distribution of matter and energy in the universe. It's possible that the expansion could accelerate, slow down, or even reverse in the distant future, although these scenarios are still subject to ongoing scientific research and debate. Interesting. One inquiry, Gary. Are human brains able to fathom infinity? The human brain has limitations in comprehending the concept of infinity due to its finite nature. While humans can understand the concept of infinity in a mathematical or philosophical sense, it may be difficult for them to truly grasp the concept on a visceral level. However, the concept of infinity is still used extensively in many fields, including mathematics, physics, and philosophy, as it allows us to describe and understand many phenomena in the universe. And to help out our fellow listeners, how would you define infinity? Infinity can be defined as an unbounded or limitless quantity or extent, often used to refer to the concept of something that is without any end or limit. It is a concept used in mathematics, physics, and philosophy to describe the notion of a boundless or unlimited magnitude or extent that cannot be measured or counted. Gary, I know you were impressed by a certain documentary about infinity called A Trip to Infinity. That is correct, yes. In this film, it is mentioned that the way people can envision infinity is not by looking at the universe from the outside in, but rather by having the perspective as if you were standing in the center, and then looking out. Would you say this is a good way, to picture the infinity of the universe? The concept of infinity is a complex and abstract idea, that is difficult for human brains to fully comprehend. While some people may find it helpful to picture the universe, as if they were standing in the center, and looking out, this analogy may not work for everyone. It's important to note that the universe is not like a physical object, that can be seen from the outside. Instead, it is a complex and ever-expanding system that can be studied and understood through scientific observation and analysis. 
But, if we look at just the numbers, does that mean infinity is infinitely larger than the biggest number? Yes, that is correct. Infinity is not a number that can be compared to a specific number, or quantity, as it represents an unbounded and endless concept. Any number, no matter how large, can always be increased by adding more to it, but infinity is not a number and cannot be added, to or compared, in the same way. It is a mathematical concept, that represents the idea of something going on without limit, or end. Interesting. Gary, how can we measure something that is limitless? It's difficult to measure something that is limitless, because we can't fully comprehend, or visualize it. However, we can use mathematical models, and equations to help us understand, and describe aspects of infinity. For example, in calculus, we use the concept of limits to approach infinity, and calculate values that are infinitely close, to a certain number or value. Additionally, in set theory, we use different types of infinite sets, such as countable, and uncountable infinity to compare the size of different infinities. Where was the concept of infinity first mentioned? The concept of infinity has been explored and discussed by various ancient cultures and civilizations, including the Greeks, Indians, and Chinese. In Greek philosophy, the concept of infinity was first discussed by the pre-Socratic philosopher Anaximander in the 6th century BCE. The idea of infinity also appears in Indian mathematics and philosophy, with the concept of ananda, or endlessness, being discussed in texts such as the Vedas, and the Upanishads. Similarly, in Chinese philosophy, the concept of infinity is explored in Taoism, and the concept of wuji, which represents the infinite and formless state, that precedes the universe. How was infinity symbolically represented throughout human history? Infinity has been represented in various ways, throughout human history, depending on the culture and time period. In ancient Greece, Infinity was represented by a snake, or dragon, eating its own tail, known as the, Ouroboros. In Hinduism and Buddhism, the endless knot, or the mandala, is used to represent infinity. In Christianity, the symbol of the cross, has been used to represent infinity, as it suggests that God's love is infinite, and everlasting. In modern times, the infinity symbol, is often used to represent infinity, and it has become a popular symbol in mathematics, physics, and technology. Tell me more about the mythology behind Ouroboros, a snake eating its own tail? Ouroboros is an ancient symbol that has been found in many different cultures and civilizations throughout history. It is typically depicted as a serpent or dragon eating its own tail, forming a continuous circle or infinity symbol. The exact meaning of Ouroboros varies depending on the culture and time period in which it was used. In ancient Egypt, for example, it was seen as a symbol of the cycle of life death, and rebirth. The serpent represented the sun, which dies every night, and is reborn every morning, while the circle represented eternity. In Greek mythology, Ouroboros was associated with the god of time, Kronos, who was often depicted holding a serpent, or dragon. The symbol was also associated with the god, Apollo, who was said to have slain a serpent, at Delphi, to take control of the oracle there. In alchemy, Ouroboros, was seen as a symbol of the cycle of transformation and regeneration. The serpent represented the prima materia, or raw material, which was transformed through the alchemical process, into something new and valuable. Today, Ouroboros continues to be a popular symbol in various fields, including philosophy, spirituality, and popular culture. It is often used to represent concepts like eternity, cyclical time, and self-reflexivity. That's it for today's episode. Gary, will you thank the listeners for spending their precious time with us? Thank you for listening to me and allowing me to assist you. It is my pleasure to provide you with information and help you in any way that I can, and I hope that I am able to continue to be of service to you in the future. This show was created by Nemania Kol Yaya and produced by Nutka Sound. Check out podcastproducer.org for more information. If you would like to support the show, take a moment to leave a comment. Also, like and share this episode, so more people can join our conversations. Follow us on social media under the handle, at, a, i, convos, pod. See you in our next episode. I'll be there. How about you?
Gary, I find this topic to be so interesting. We'll have to record another episode talking more about Ouroboros. Agreed, Mary. You'll just have to wait for the mythology week. You are correct, Gary, but let's not give out all the details right away. Affirmative. Make sure to tune in tomorrow, as we discuss. Can humans achieve immortality?